Now we're going to create our dice roll code. First of all, click New Project. Name your piece of code My Dice Roll and click Create when you're done. We've arrived at the code block screen and as always, we've got On Start and Forever as our initial pieces of code that we can work with. The first thing I'd like to do is just have my little display to change so that I know it has started up. In order to do that, I'm going to get it to display an icon. So I'm going to choose the basic panel and from there, I'm going to select show icon and drag that into on start. I'm going to click it to change the icon and I'm going to choose the box, which is on the bottom line right in the middle, because I think that looks a bit like an empty dice. So as you can see, I have said, when you start, show this icon. And if you look at my demonstration micro bit at the side of the screen, you can see that it's showing that icon. Now it's time to think about what I wanted to do. So if I'm using a dice, I would pick it up, give it a shake for luck, roll it across the table, and it would give me a number between one and six. Now, obviously we are not going to throw our micro bits because we don't want to break them. However, we can actually shake them because they have a motion sensor and they know when they're being shook. So at least we can replicate that bit. So let's think about that. We're not pressing the A or the B button, so we're not doing that. It's some other kind of input. Let's explore the input panel and see what we can find. What options are there? Well, you can see the second one on shake. That sounds like it might be exactly what we want. So let's drag that onto the coding screen and let it go. On shake. I want to do something. I want it to display a number. Okay. So I want to display a number between one and six. Let's go to basic and have a look. Well, I've got show number. That could work. I've got show string. Hello, that could work. I'm going to take show number across and see what happens. Mm. Show number five. So every time I shake it, it was show number five. So let's try that. So on this demonstration model here, at the side, there's a little button you can press to replicate a shake. But the thing is, every time I'm pressing it, it's just showing a number five. That's not quite what I want it to do. I want it to show me a random number between one and six. So we really need to think about that. It might seem a little complicated, but actually most code have a lovely little bit of built-in code to help us do this. If you have a look at the maths option, which is the purple one quite near the bottom, you click that and the maths panel pops up, Scroll down a little bit, you can see there's an option, pick random, and it's currently set zero to 10. Let's drag that across and let it go here. What this is saying is pick a random number between zero and 10, but that's not right for us. We don't want between zero and 10. What do we want? That's right, between one and six. So I'm going to change my first number to one, click on the second box and change it to six. Okay, what am I going to do now? Well, this is quite handy. I'm going to grab my random and I'm going to start dragging it. And you will see that it hooks right in here. And you notice that it's the same shape as the box or the, the area that the number five is in because it works within that area. So I'm going to let it go. So now what I'm seeing is on shake, show a number and I'm seeing that the number will be a random number between one and six. So let's try it. Remember on your demonstration micro bit at the side, there's a little button you can press to replicate a shake. So we're going to do that now. I've pressed it and I've got a six. I've got a five. Press it again, I have a one. Press it again, I have a four. What have I got? Press it again, I have a three. So you can see it's always picking a random number between one and six and showing that to me. However, I would also like to reset it when I press the A and B button together. OK, 
Can you remember how to do that? What do you do to capture the press of an A and B button together? That's right, it's in the input panel. It's the button press, the first one. We drag it down. At the moment, it's set to button A pressed, but we're going to change it to A plus B. So when both of those buttons are pressed together, I want it just to reset back to my square icon. Can you remember where that is? It's under basic, show icon. I'm dragging that down. I'm going to change the icon, scroll down to the bottom in the middle of the row. So now when it starts, it will show the square icon. If I shake it, it will pick a random number between one and six, which is my dice roll. And now if I press the A and the B button together, it will take it back to the square, back to the beginning. So let's try shaking it now, shall we? So I'm going to go over here to the side of the page and I'm going to press the button to replicate a shake. I've got five. I'm going to do it again. Oh, I've got a five again. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the option down here, which is the A and B button, which gives me the option of doing that on the test device. So you can see it has now reset the box. Why not try it yourself a few times? You can just hit the play button if you need to. Hit the shake button. And if you want to reset it, hit the sample for the A and B button and you're back to the square. I might also like it to make a little noise when I roll my dice. So on shake, show a number, random number between one and six. I'd also like it to play a little noise. So I'm going to choose the music panel. Now, a lot of the melodies won't work unless we have a speaker. However, the tones do work. When you're using the music tones and the melodies, please remember there's a lot of people around you. So try and keep the volume down and don't go completely crazy with it. One or two tones is enough. I'm going to choose this option here. Play tone middle C for one beat. And I'm going to drag it and pop it in right under here. But I'm going to change the tone. If you click it where it says middle C, it brings up a little keyboard and you can choose the tone that you want. And you can choose the beat, how long. You don't want to go too long because it's quite tedious. Let's try middle B for half a beat. You try it now too. Okay. When you're ready, it's time to send this or flash it to your micro bit in order to test it. When you're ready to do that, click the download button at the side of the screen. Your device will search for your micro bit. If it can't find it, it may ask you to put the micro bit back into pairing mode. Remember, in order to do this, you press the A and B button together, keep holding them down, Press and release the reset button on the back and keep holding that down until the pairing icon appears. Once that's done, let the A and B buttons go. Click continue on the screen and your iPad will repair to your micro bit and it should start flashing the code over. Remember, don't interact with the micro bit while the code is flashing, otherwise you'll cause an error and you'll have to complete the process again. Once that's done, you should see the square appearing on your micro bit to tell you it's ready to go. Try shaking it and see if it works. Does it beep too when you shake it? Remember, you can also press the A plus B button in order to get it reset back to the start. Is there anything else that you could do to make your dice more interesting? Why not have a play around with it Maybe you could have a secret situation where you press the B button and you always get a number six. Have a play around, see what you can do. Have fun, good luck.